Muslim merchant Tajik, living in Mecca, very respected, from a you know a strong family and everything. Why would he leave his city? It's, it's so clear. Lesson number one, he was living for his deen. If he was able to make his deen number one and practice his, his religion fully, he will be uh, happy to live in his hometown. If that didn't work, doesn't work, doesn't work out for him or did not work out for him, he, we see him ready to leave even his own town, let alone his business and everything. He was ready to do it. That's Abu Bakr Siddiq, the second man in our religion after the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Actually, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself, he did it. He left his house, he left everything behind, and he traveled to Al Medina with nothing in his hands, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but a little. So Abu Bakr was ready to make that sacrifice, and he was leaving Mecca. قالت حتى إذا بلغ بركة الغماد when he reached to بركة الغماد which is a point uh, close to Yemen or he was in the road to take him there uh, he was not very far from Mecca uh, somebody met him قال قالت لقيه ابن الدغنة زيد بن الدغنة قالت وهو سيد القارة he was the leader of his tribe by the name of القارة he met Abu Bakr al-Siddiq Abu Bakr al-Siddiq is leaving his hometown is known to everybody as being a good person. Uh, Zayd ibn Dagina met him. He is a leader, not Muslim. He's not Muslim. He's a leader from his hometown, Mecca. And listen to what he said. And this is the main focus that we have to really pay attention to. Where are you going, Abu Bakr? What is your destination? Why are you leaving Mecca? My people pushed me out. I'm not, I'm not going by my well, but. I'm, I'm pushed, I'm chased out of my town. My people uh, caused me to do that. And I am just planning to, I'm just going out. Not a clear destination. To go, I'm just going out. Even though he was planning to go to Al Habasha, and, but he didn't, didn't want to make his intention so clear to somebody that he doesn't, he's not 100% sure. So he said, I'm just leaving Mecca. And in order for me to worship my Lord, that's my, my intention. I'm leaving everything, I'm going out because my people pushed me to do it just to worship my Lord. Look at this. He said, this man, this leader, he said, somebody like you, Abu Bakr, Allah Abu Bakr, somebody like you should not leave his town and you shouldn't be pushed to leave. You shouldn't be. He should not leave it in the first place. Somebody with, in your weight, with your weight. So reading, what, what do we read from that? What do we read from that? If we, if we ever happen to leave our city, where we live in, would it make a difference? In the eye of somebody who was non-Muslim, Zayd ibn Dabinna, he was a leader uh, of his people, of his tribe. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, not being in Mecca for him would make a difference. He said, somebody like you, like you, what he means is an asset for Mecca. He should not leave. So that tells you how much of uh, engagement and participation Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was even before that. And he was not making it mainly to be protected. He was making it for the sake of Allah. He was making it because that's who he is and that's what his religion is teaching him. So you can imagine, he, he goes on to say, somebody like you, he does not, he shouldn't go out and he shouldn't be forced to go out. Somebody who doesn't have anything, you stand for him, you give him money, you support those who do not have anything. You are also so good to your uh, uh, relatives, you uh, make sila for a while. وتحمل الكل الكل is somebody who has a lot of, a lot of uh, burdens he got a big family he got a lot of children he got a lot of expenses and he was not he's not capable of uh, fulfilling these you support them so you support those who have zero and you support those who got some expenses and they are not making of making uh, they are not capable of making the ends meet as they say so you support all of these people وتحمل الكل وتقر الضيف and you are such a good person and, and a hospitable person to your name, to your uh, guests. And if anybody, if any calamity befalls any person, if any hardship, any person is going through a hardship, you're always there standing for him. This is the qualification of Abu Bakr al-Siddiq that was not only seen by Muslims, it was visible even to non-Muslims, to, to people, you know, who are not uh, sharing the faith with him. 
Because of all of these, you shouldn't go out. I will give you my protection. It was known to Meccans and Arabs back then, especially for the leaders, or specifically for the leaders. If you give your, somebody your protection, which is in probably close to Abidavid support in nowadays uh, terms, if you like, that means everybody should respect it. It goes with how much you respect people have uh, for you. So that is that is the right of protection. That was a law that they go, they go by, or, or, or custom that they go by, and it was respected by everybody, by everybody. So he said, I give you my protection, you come back under my protection, and go back and worship your Lord in your hometown. Go back, worship your Lord in your hometown. And he returned. And Ibn went with him, and he announced it. And he made sure that he let everybody in Mecca know that Abu Bakr is under my protection, the protection of Zayd ibn Dagna. Uh, he made it, he made the announcement in front of the elite of Quraysh. He stood for him, not only giving him his protection, but he tried to fix it. He said, somebody like Abu Bakr, he is talking to the elite of Quraysh. Should not, he was doing what he was defending Abu Bakr and speaking for him and standing up for him. But somebody like Abu Bakr talking to the elite of, of Quraysh should not be driven out. And he also repeated the same thing. You should not go out, you should not let him go out, let alone you push him to go out. You shouldn't do either. Do you push out somebody with these qualifications? He stands for the weak, he supports those who are in need, he is always by those who are in hardship, he is good to his neighbors, he is good to his uh, guests. Somebody like that should not be pushed out just because you do not uh, believe what he believes. They took, it was a law, a custom, a norm, they took it and they did not violate uh, the uh, protection of Ibn Dagna. The hadith goes on, it's a, a little bit long hadith that will mention what happens later on. But that's what I want to quote from the hadith. Here is the point. If we have to look at the examples, we look at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa number one, and then we look at the Sahaba. On top of them comes Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. This is, they, had, they lived their life. They made businesses, they were successful. Look, take, for example, Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, and uh, Uthman ibn Affan and all the rest of the Sahaba, some of them had businesses, some of them were just ordinary workers, but along with their businesses and lives and everything, they stood for their iman and faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They built allies with their communities, with the people of Mecca. They pushed them to the, the suburbs of Mecca and they had this total boycott, yet they had those uh, credit, they had this credit with their communities. And again, we see Muslims nowadays, Alhamdulillah, I'm not saying it's not there. The masjid, if I show you something, um, it's like viral, it's going viral now. The masjid that burned down in, uh, in uh, Victoria, Texas, uh, the, the reason is not known, but they put the people there, somebody, Omar something from the masjid, he put uh, a link or a, he started a page on GoFundMe, the website, if somebody needs money, GoFundMe, they go do that. So then he started this account, do you know? Do you know how much did they collect so far? 800. 800, that was like three hours ago. It's now, before I come for Salat al-Isha, it was 907, 900,000, zero, seven, and it's going up. If I check it right now, I'm not sure how much, but this is how, two, uh, eight out of 10, eight out of 10, what is the percent? 80 percent, that's 80 percent of those who donated, guess what? They are not Muslims, they will not. So that tells you how this masjid and this community were open to everybody that uh, uh, even uh, non-Muslims did not like it. And they spoke very clearly, not, not in terms of words, in actions. They spoke in terms of actions that this is not us, that's not what, what is supposed to happen to you, we are here by your side. This is a translation of exactly what happened to Abu Bakr al-Siddiq in action. We as community in here, and uh, so are all the communities in the, in, the, in the West, we need to do that. Let's not just live for ourselves, let's open our doors it doesn't take much. Share some of your food with your neighbor. If you cook something good, and we are very good, mashallah, Pakistanis and Arabs and wherever you're coming from, our wives and mashallah, I mean, we have, we have, we have special cuisine in me. Let's share a plate with our neighbors. Let's start a relationship. Let's talk to them. They appreciate it very much. It means 
everything for them. If we here, 20, maybe 30 people are here, we just every week, I would say every week you share one little place with your neighbor, see how much effect this is going to happen. If the three, four hundred people who attend Jum'ah, they just did what, this one thing, once a month. You share one plate with your neighbor, they appreciate it very much. You will be really starting these relationships. You are doing that for the sake of Allah, for the sake of da'wah, and also for protection. Because we need those people by our side when it comes to hard times that, like, like those times we live in. All of that, besides number one thing, which is having yaqeen in Allah and having faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what we have to do our part and follow the causes and نأخذ بالنسبة ولقوي هذا وصلى الله عظيما لي ولكم في دائرة الوجود